Welcome back to math. So today we're going to be looking at the factors, the sixes and the sevens, using that distributive property. Think of a six as a five and a one, and think of a seven as a five and a two. And that's going to make this a lot easier because we all know our fives and twos and our ones. Pretty simple. All right, we're back on the board here. I've been skipping the Bob videos because this all kind of falls into the same idea of distributive property, breaking apart a large array into two small arrays and figuring that out. So today we're going to look at sixes and sevens. We're on page 128. You see a marching band here. <clears throat> and there are eight band members in each row. How many rows? Well, we need to figure that out real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six rows. And there's eight guys and girls in each row, eight band members. Um, I played drums in band and I don't see myself on there. There's no, no drummers. What kind of a band is this? Maybe these guys are drumming. Uh, anyway, so we can take this array and multiplying times six, counting by six is kind of hard. So I wanna break that into something easier. Well, I could do a four and a two. That might work, but I really like five and one. I think if I took a six and broke it into a five and a one, that'd be really easy for me because I love to count by fives. And anything times one is super easy. So now instead of having, I still have six rows, but I'm gonna look at it as these five rows and then that one row right there. So five rows of eight, which is just five times eight, which is the same as eight times five. So five rows of eight plus one more row of eight. Five rows of eight, count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Plus one more eight would be eight. And that's gonna give me 48. So breaking down the big numbers into two smaller, easier numbers. Let's look down here to convince me. Use a fives fact and a ones fact to find six times nine. Draw the two arrays and explain your drawing. That's okay. Here we go. I'm not going to worry about drawing the arrays. Um, the fives fact and the one fact. I just broke this six into a five and a one. So it would be five groups of nine plus one group of nine. And five groups of nine. You can do the nines trick or you can count by fives. Use commutative property and switch that to be nine groups of five. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, plus one more 9, which is just 9, and that's going to give us 54. Okay, we could have also done the 9's trick to figure that out. Put down finger number 6, which is this one. Our 10's place is 5, our 1's place is 4, 54. We got it. Now let's look at this. Now if we had seven, sevens are good to break apart into fives and twos because five plus two is seven. And I love to count by fives and I love to count by twos. So that makes this really easy. So instead of looking at seven rows of eight, I'm gonna break it apart and say, well, here's five rows of eight and that's 40. Here's two more rows of eight, that's 16. And I'm gonna put those two numbers together to get 56. All right, the guy in practice, do you understand? understand the students who are graduating are standing in seven equal rows and there are nine students in each row how many students are graduating use a fives fact and a twos fact so what we have is seven groups of nine we're going to break that apart and i'm going to take that seven and make it a five times the nine plus a two times the nine, because five plus two is seven. Now five times nine, if I do my fingers, it'd be 45. Two groups of nine is nine plus nine, that's 18. And 45, that's supposed to be a plus. 18 equals 63. Chrissy bakes three cherry pies, yum. I love a cherry pie, it's my favorite kind of, well, pumpkin's my favorite, but cherry's my second. Uh, she cuts each pie into six slices, so how many slices does she have? 
Chrissy bakes three cherry pies. She cuts each pie into six slices. How many slices does she have? Well, we could draw the picture of that. Or we can say, well, it's three pies, and there's six slices in each one. So I could break that apart and say it's two groups of six plus one more group of six. Or I could say it's six plus another six plus another six. And however you slice it, it's 18. Ah, however you slice it, get that? Okay, in three through eight multiply, you might want to use pictures. Anytime you multiply times 10, Take the first factor, add a zero to the end, because that's six tens, 60. Seven times six, I might break that into two times six plus five times six. Two times six is 12, five times six is 30. So that's gonna give me 42. Seven times seven, I'm gonna break that into five times seven plus Two times seven. And five times seven, if I count up with my counting by fives, I get 35. Plus two times seven is seven plus seven. Add those together, I'm gonna to get 49. Nine times seven, we did that right here. It's 63. It says find four times seven. Now let's go back to what we did on the last lesson. We just doubled. So we had two times seven plus two times seven. So I'll write that here. 14 plus 14, and that's going to give us 28. And then we go to multiply 6 times 5. I am just going to use my fingers and count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right. So just to recap a little bit here, we have learned... I'm going to write it right up here. We learned our zeros. We've learned the ones, the twos. We worked on the threes and the fours. The fives were really easy. Uh, we haven't talked about sixes yet, but we have. Oh, yeah, we did. We did it right here. I'm so sorry. Sixes, sevens, and nines, and tens. So all that's missing is the eights. Guess what's coming up next? It'll be the eights. Uh, but use the distributive property to help you with some of these bigger numbers. Break them into those smaller numbers that are easier to work with.